We've come to Kew Gardens to see if the 70 to 180 f2.8 Z lens with a teleconverter can actually be used in place of a macro lens. Oh, that's a good question. Thank you. Okay. Let's go and find out. Okay. You know what's interesting Ooh. is that I put the 70 to 180 Z on first, then I put this one on. The closest focusing distance on the 70 to 180 F mount is so much closer. It's like double the closeness. Mm. So if you are really wanting to get, obviously you've got manual focus, but if you are really wanting to get very close to your subject, then this might be the way to do it. Yeah, do you find it fastest to use autofocus lens <laughs> for macro? Yep. Yeah. And also I can sort of trust myself that it's going to be in focus. Whereas with the 70 to 180, I was seriously doubting my manual focus skills. The biggest challenge, honestly, with macro is, is the depth of field, because you want to be super close, mm -hmm. but you need a depth of field so that it's not just, you know, a fraction of a millimeter is what's in focus. Mm -hmm. So you're constantly playing with these factors. Okay, so we've got some lenses, but three of them are Z macro lenses. So it's 105, 50, which are dedicated macro, but also this 70 to 180, which has macro capabilities. Then we thought, why won't we add the 70 to 180 F mount? It's manual focus and technically a macro lens, but focusing manually, handheld, can become quite a challenge. Well, those ones will be able to focus, and that will make all the difference. Now, the question is, what rendering is better, which one is sharper, and which one can actually get closer to the subject? So we're here, we're going to find out. I'm excited, aren't you? Come on, let's go, with, walk with me. Is that, is that, is that, is that? Too close. That's annoying, yeah. actually. Well, to be too close or too far away? No, I framed it at the 70 end. Yeah. Quite liked it. Then thought I'll zoom into 180. The focus distance changes, so then it's too close. So I'd have I to see. step further back. Okay. So it's it's trying to drill my brain into not doing that. Fair enough. We all have our challenges. <laughs> I quite like that. Yeah, I mean. Like the shots of the drops, always great. Yeah. Okay. Wow. I think so. Yeah, I did. Proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's a manual focus lens, isn't it? It is a manual focus lens. The Foxy Ring is not great, is it? No, it's not great. It's quite stiff and it is the whole front of the lens, essentially. And the problem is, if it's a bit windy like today, then your focus is all over the place. So what you're saying is that it's actually quite challenging to use this lens. Yeah, because some flowers can't just stop and wait for where the shot is taken. I, I, that's pretty close, actually. It's pretty close. We look at that distance there. The ISO is going up so much. Well, the problem is when you're focusing so close, you need to use a smaller aperture because what? otherwise you don't. That's the thing. Is so ISO is going to go up exactly. because of that. So if you 
it's a moving subject, you need to shoot a thousand of a second, yeah? So you're gonna put it at F11, and then suddenly your ISO is like four thousands of a second. That's right. And then will it be usable short? It will be, would I wanna shoot it on the tripod? And this would be steel, and I would shoot ISO 64 on this camera. Yes, I would. You know. <laughs> the challenges of being a macro photographer. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, macro lens, you know, done properly, focusing doesn't matter. You use your manual focus, you set it up, nothing is moving, it's perfect, you get the fantastic sharp results. But on a day like this, when everything's flying, I'll take out focus lens any day. Okay, so now I've changed the lens to Z7180, which has some macro capabilities. So let's go and photograph this purple flower, whatever that is. <laughs> Just to clarify, you do have the TC 1.4 on there as well. Yeah, so she, she technically should get me closer. All right, so, all right, let's see how close we can get it. Okay, so straight away, what I do like about this lens is autofocus. What I don't like about this lens is the closest focusing distance. Now, don't get me wrong, it gets close. I say for me, it probably would be more than I need, but for serious macro photographers, this is not close enough, even with 1.4 teleconverter. But for just general photography of purple flowers or red or yellows, whatever they are, then, you know, I think this is reasonable. Oh God, uh, I don't know how you do this, Becky, really. <laughs> uh, I can tell you. Lots of practice. Yeah. I probably won't feel my legs. All right, okay, yeah, so, like, I have to go back. Like, unless I want to shoot at 70, but at 70, no, it's not close enough. No, oh, interesting. Khan now has the 50mm macro on there, so we've done the 270 to 180s. How are you finding the 50mm? Well, as you can see, I can get to the flowers much, much closer than I can do with 70 to 180 lens, which means I can really get into the grids of the flowers, get all the texture. But the problem is, if, you, if you've got a, like a bee or a wasp, then you have to be really, really close to it. And the problem with that is you can get bitten, you can spook it because, you know, you're a big and hairy photographer, you know, you don't, you don't want to spook it anymore. So I think the good thing is you can get close. Uh, the bad thing is you need something like a longer focal distance macro lens just to kind of separate you and the subject a little bit to make them feel a little bit comfortable. And as a photographer, you're not going to get attacked as well. I think I've got a win on my hands right now because I can photograph this guy over here uh, without spooking him unless I put my finger in there, you know. Um, it makes all the difference. We're talking about maybe 10 centimeters difference. Now. It's the difference between getting the shot and not getting the shot. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Don't work with animals. <laughs> and children. <laughs> and children, that's what they say, right? <laughs> Bees are included in that. I have put the 70 to 180 F mount through its paces. There is something about that lens that I don't know if it's because of the different coatings, maybe it's the fact that it's just an older lens, but it produces a very different rendering to these modern lenses. It's almost kind of like a filmy sort of look. Oh, you throw this one in, mm. okay. And it's really interesting because I have actually shot it on the D850 as well as now on the Z cameras, both the Z6 and the Z8. And I find it, it's one of those lenses that you either really like that look or you don't. It produces much more noise at higher ISOs than these lenses as well. Mm. So you just have to bear that in mind. Plus the fact that it's manual focus actually makes it quite challenging. So I reckon it's because it has less coating, so it produces less contrasty images out of the box. That's probably why. Now, in terms of the comparison between the 105 and the 50mm macro versus the 70 to 180, 
70 to 180 is great if you don't do a lot of macro. If you do the occasional bit of close up, you want to try something a bit different. Maybe you've already got a teleconverter or you are taking the 70 to 180 out on, let's say, like a day trip and you want to do some close ups. It's very good for that sort of thing. But if you are pretty much just doing macro, then you cannot beat resolution the depth of field, the bokeh rendering, and also just the, the overall speed of focus of the 105 and the 50. They're, none of them are notoriously fast to focus lenses. If you're shooting moving subjects, you do sometimes have to give them a helping hand just to get to where you want to go. But the dedicated macro lenses get my vote every time. Thanks to one of our very kind viewers, we were actually able to get our hands on a TC two times to do some tests with the 70 to 180 Z lens. So although the closest focusing distance doesn't change much with either teleconverter, what you can see here are just some sample images that we did after we'd been out at Q. And the real difference is actually the magnification. You can clearly see with the two times teleconverter that you get a much higher magnification ratio with the two times converter. It isn't going to be as sharp, but actually, if you are wanting to get super close to your subject, the TC two times is something worth considering. In this test, we haven't done brick walls for the simple reason that we're talking about how these lenses perform for macro. And a lot of the time, macro work is how's the center sharpness? How's the bokeh rendering? Those are the things that we're looking at here. How's the depth of field? How fast is the focus? So I think that we can probably agree that if you are a macro photographer, opt for a dedicated macro, whether it be the 105, the 50, or even one of the F mount 60 AFS or 105 VR AFS on your FTZ. Yeah, and I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> However, if you travel and you like 70 to 180 for these type of shots, you're a more portrait guy, you like your... Uh, I don't know what I'm saying. Just say uh, okay, okay. However, if you're not a macro photographer and 70 to 180 suits your needs more, and then you want to throw in occasional close-up, then get 70 to 180. It's a very nice lens, sharp wide open, great bokeh, and it's reasonably light compared to the 70 to 180 2.8. We hope you found this video really helpful. If you have any other suggestions of comparisons you'd like us to make, please feel free to drop them in the comments below and please don't forget to like and subscribe. If you found this video super useful, there's soup things button as well, hit it if you can. Do, 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 okay, do, so, do, do, do. Um, so, this, is, this is my this is how I, I start my covers. This is the counterpoint coming from me. Absolutely. Here you have it folks. Just wait for the little tractor to start. Like yeah. it's impossible to film here. Uh now the sun's come out. Yeah. Finally. Now we can take actually some film pictures. You know, <laughs> do some real photography. <laughs> Not this Mickey Mouse flower things. Okay. Not this wow. <laughs>